double replacement is when you have two compounds and you're putting them together and they're going to form two other compounds. Now, uh, generally uh, one of the two compounds has to be aqueous in order for them to come together. You don't just take two solids and mix them together. You don't get anything that's going to happen there unless you have a hydrated compound and then that can be kind of clever and very interesting and there's a great thermodynamic lab that I do that does just that, mixes solids together and you get an aqueous solution. But not here. <laughs> right here, all you have to do is look and see that you've got aqueous compounds, two compounds, and what are you going to do to be able to make a reaction here or a potential reaction? Well, again, cation, anion, cation, anion. Just switch partners. So the positive from one compound in the sodium chloride goes with that negative over here. Make sure the positives and negatives go together. Okay, so what is the charge of Na? It's positive one. What is the charge of nitrate over here? Even though there's two of them here, you don't care about that. What's the charge? NO3 is a negative one charge. Okay, that means that when Na positive and NO3 get together, you get NaNO3. What did I tell you about nitrate? Y'all is gonna have AQ. Right, when you have solutions over here and nitrates formed over here, it's going to stay in solution. Okay, so that compound is very soluble. The lead goes with the chloride. Lead, in this case, because it was... Now, you can look at this you say, well, which lead was that? There's a two positive charge and a four positive charge lead. Well, look, nitrate is negative one, right? So, in order to make this chemical, that two mm -hmm, used to be there as the charge of the lead. What that means is that the lead was a 2 positive, the nitrate was a negative 1 to make that formula. Okay, so 2 positive lead is still going to be 2 positive on the product side. And so what we get is Pb with a 2 positive coming together with Cl, which is a negative 1 charge on the chart, and you're going to get PbCl2. You check a solubility chart, and you're going to find something very interesting. That chloride ion, which happens to be right here in the solubility chart, you go down to the low solubility or slightly solubility column and you're going to find there that PB2 positive is indicated and that means that that is a precipitate in solution. It will form a solid and come out when the concentrations are around, like I said before, around 0.1 moles per liter. So, hey, that's a solid and now you have done the double replacement. You have put in your states of matter, left to do, balancing, one sodium here, and you got one sodium here. Okay, so that's one and one. You got one chloride here, you got two chlorides there, so what are you going to do? You're going to put a two in front of this right here, which says two Cl's and two Cl's, but you got two Na's and you got one Na's, so you're going to put a two there. Now I got two of those NO3's. Yeah, you got two of those NO3's. Isn't that nice? And so therefore, it is balanced in a two to one to two to one ratio. Okay, now, that is a double replacement reaction. Another example of that. Here is sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and it's reacting with barium chlorides in solution, BaCl2. So you do the double replacement. The H, which is a positive one, goes with the Cl, which is a negative one. So you get HClAq. Now, by the way, that's going to be aqueous. I know that because hydrogen, H positive, doesn't precipitate out with anything. Now, what about this one here? The barium and the sulfate coming together. The Ba with a 2 positive going with the SO4 with a 2 negative. Oh yeah, when you look up at SO4 2 negative on the chart here and you go down, you'll find Ba2 positive in the slightly soluble, low solubility, solid column. And so that means that barium sulfate is a precipitate. And so the Ba2 positive goes together with SO4, which is a 2 negative. See, Ba2 positive, SO4 is 2 negative. Now get rid of those charges because you don't want those in your compound. 2 positive and 2 negative, simply going to make BaSO4, and that's a solid. Now we got to balance it. Two H's, one H, two H's. Two CLs, two CLs. One BA, one BA. One SO4, one SO4. One, one, two, one, and we're all done. And so, double replacement reactions, always look for a precipitate, or if you have a reaction where, very quickly, you have maybe not sulfuric acid here, but let's take sodium 
hydroxide. Na is a positive one. Hydroxide is one of the only two polyatomic elements generally found on a chart that end in IDE. Remember that on your periodic table, all the things that end in ID are the non-metallic single elements, nitride, oxide, sulfide. Up here in the polyatomic ion chart, you have the eights and the ites. Two ides in there are going to be cyanide and hydroxide. So there's hydroxide, sodium hydroxide. And if we do a double replacement reaction here, H positive with OH negative makes HOH, H positive OH negative. Well, that's water. You can write water as HOH if you want to, liquid. You can write it as H2O, but it's really good for balancing if you do it this way. Watch. And then the Na positive goes with the SO4, which is 2 negative. Ah, that's Na2SO4. Positive 1, 2 negative. That's what you get. That is not a solid at room temperature because that is a group 1 element and it's always going to be in solution, AQ. Now, see, the state of matter here is liquid and water is liquid, so you put the L there, okay? So generally, aqueous is solids and maybe liquids when you get water. Oh, now the balance. Two H's, you can say, well, there's two H's. <laughs> there's one H. <laughs> because that's hydroxide, keep it together. 1H, 2Hs. So 2, 2. Now you've got two OHs. Ah, you've got one OH. Put a 2 in front. But now you've got them two NAs. you got two NAs there. you got one SO4 there and one SO4 there. That's one's balanced. 1, 2, 2, 1. Okay. And that's double replacement reactions.